Back in 1984, a groundbreaking game was released on the BBC Micro by a British game developer named David Braden. This game was called Elite. And Elite was truly groundbreaking in that it offered a vast procedural galaxy for you to explore in various ships. You could trade, do battle with pirates or even aliens, and it, it was truly amazing what he was able to accomplish on a machine with the specs of the BBC Micro. This was later ported to other platforms and also had several sequels, many of which appeared on the Commodore Amiga. The latest iteration in the franchise is Elite Dangerous. Elite started with a Kickstarter around the same time as Star Citizen, and David Braden's original pitch for the game was very much like Star Citizen, in that the ships would have interiors, and they would be able to walk on planet surfaces, and basically his entire pitch, what he described, was basically what Star Citizen has right now. However, not long after Elite Dangerous launched, cracks began to form. People began to notice something was off when the Horizons update came out. Horizons allowed you to land on planet surfaces. You were able to get out of your ship in a vehicle called an SRV, drive around and shoot rocks to get resources. And that was pretty much what the update was. Frontier Developments, the company that Braden started to make Elite Dangerous, also put out a season pass. But in the years afterward, they released no other paid content to justify the sale of season pass. And it was several years of just a drought of new content and just minor updates when just very relatively recently there were a series of updates that brought some new features to the game many of which were very, very negatively received by the gaming community. The latest to be received very negatively by gamers, and for good reason, is the Odyssey expansion. The Odyssey expansion finally brings what Braden promised, being able to walk on planet surfaces on your own two feet with your character, and in space stations, but it did not include ship interiors. In fact, the company has basically said they're not going to do ship interiors after Braden's original Kickstarter pitch and also after initially promising them earlier in live streams. What's worse is that before the game's release, Frontier promised several things. They promised full VR support, which Elite Dangerous has been well known for its incredible VR experience. The VR is the best way to play Elite Dangerous Horizons. Once you play it in VR, you don't want to go back to playing it normally. Visuals have always been really good. Sound quality is incredible. Sound effects are incredible. And there's a reason for that, and I'll be getting to that soon. But the Horizons update was a mess. It had uninspired gameplay. It had FPS combat on the ground, which was frankly really not that great. And it included the one thing that Elite Dangerous has been really known for for a long time, and that's grind. You want to do something in the game, you got to grind it. You want to upgrade to your suit, you got to grind it. Sometimes as long as 30 hours just to get something. Want to put a scope on your gun? got to grind. You got to grind. Most of the game is grinding. Grinding for money to buy new ships, which is part of what the progression is for the game. There was the power play system that was introduced. That is grind with little reward. And that's the problem with the game, is that it is grind on top of grind with little reward. Uh, at least they did change the engineers from being very RNG so that you at least get, you know, what you expect from that. But the engineers sort of broke the game because you can engineer a ship 
to such an extent that even system security, even station security, cannot kill your ship. You basically become invincible, and you can basically do whatever. And this has fostered a very toxic community within the elite dangerous player community of people who just go out and just kill new players and players with weaker ships just for fun and make it extremely difficult for them to play the game. It's such a problem that many, many players segregated themselves into another community, the most famous of which is Mobius PvE. But getting back to Odyssey. Odyssey broke a lot of promises, particularly VR. Frontier promised that they would have VR support for Odyssey for walking on the ground. Technically, they don't. It's still presented in 3D view, but it's now a 2D window in front of you when you get out of your ship. So it looks like you're looking at a 3D video screen in front of your VR view when you are on foot, rather than it being immersive around you as it is when you're in your ship. This is on top of myriads and myriad problems, and if I listed all those problems, this video would be way longer. But the Elite Dangerous community has basically lost patience with Frontier over this. Many YouTubers who have been longtime supporters of Elite Dangerous, longtime supporters of Frontier Developments, have decided to either stop producing content altogether or play other games. Now, there are a few, and I'm not going to name them because I don't want them to be harassed. There are a few who are white knighting for Frontier. And, you know, that's okay. They can do that, but they're going to lose subscribers. In fact, they, they have. And they've lost quite a few. The situation is pretty bad. And we didn't know exactly how bad it was. Frontier's gone radio silent. They released the latest update which they were supposed to have a live stream at the end of the month, letting us know, you know what is to come. What's the future of Elite Dangerous Odyssey? We didn't get that. And now we're told that the fixes for the game, the vital fixes for the game, won't be coming until the console version is out. And that has been delayed potentially until next year. So this game is going to languish for more than a year with its current bugs, its bad performance, really bad FPS performance, and awful graphics, where they, they broke the normally wonderful planet procedural generation. They broke that. It's going to languish with that, when with a terrible UI, which they did sort of kind of fix recently with a patch, for a year, an entire year without any fixes, and with no guarantee that the console release update is going to fix anything. In fact, we've already been told that it's going to be downgraded to the console. The PC version is going to be downgraded to the console version graphics-wise to bring it into parity. And they're not releasing the console version for the current gen systems. They're releasing it for the PlayStation 4. So we're not even going to get the enhanced graphical capabilities of the next gen systems on PC. Now, why is all this happening? Why is Frontier doing this? Well, we have a clue. And I'll have links below in the description that you can go to and look at yourself from a site called Glassdoor. Now, Glassdoor is a site that allows employees to review a company for prospective new hires, where people can read about the company and find out if it's a good place that they want to go work. And what's been posted on that site paints an extremely disturbing picture that the company is run by people who really don't understand modern game design, that they are more interested in profits than producing a good game, 
that one thing that I suspected about Elite Dangerous is true is that their assets, their graphics and sound are all outsourced. They don't produce any of it in-house. And another thing confirmed is that their engine, the Cobra engine, which powers the game, is terrible. It's not designed, not capable of handling what they're trying to make it do. David Braden is trying to give us a discount star citizen and it's not working. The engine is just not capable of handling it. Despite his initial Kickstarter pitch, which is supposed to have all that, all those features and capabilities, but it doesn't. And they've had a brain drain. A lot of people have left the company who knew how the engine worked, who knew the ins and outs of it, and they're gone. And now they're hiring just college kids off the street from Cambridge, which they're right near Cambridge University. They're just hiring them off the street and they're paying them barely enough, not even, not even enough to pay for student rent to work on the game. And this is likely happening throughout the entire company. And they've already got other projects in the works. They've got another Jurassic Park park simulator game coming. And they've got a game on the Warhammer franchise that they're working on. So it's not looking very good. Based on this information, I don't see how Elite Dangerous has a future. Odyssey was released too early. It was released just in time to tick a box on their financial calendar to make their investors happy. That's basically why it was released when it was. They deliberately lied to the gamers in order to incentivize them to buy the expansion. That's another major problem. And all the other promises that they made to deliver features that they said was coming, they completely lied. There's no other word that I can use to describe exactly what they did. They lied deliberately on purpose. That is the current state of Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Star Citizen is entering a phase where the big technical hurdles that have been holding the game back are finally, finally coming into fruition. The server meshing is probably one of the biggest hurdles that the company has ever faced. Once that's working, and they'll likely get that this year because they've got an enormous team of engineers working on it, once they get server meshing done, then there'll be no stopping the game from being finished. And many of us suspect 2025 or 2030 could possibly be a release date. Now, CIG does not announce release dates. They learn not to do that. But that is a realistic time frame for release because Server meshing has been holding a lot of stuff back. Their AI is done. The AI where the, the characters are sitting on, standing on chairs and, and, and acting derpy in the game, basically that's working, but they can't implement it because the servers are being overloaded. And there is no way that, no way that Frontier Development is going to be able to fix a late danger to be able to compete with that. There is no way. Tigra Khan is of the mind that Frontier wants to get rid of Elite Dangerous because it's not profitable. And they're not making enough money off of it. They're making more money off of their other franchises. They've got Jurassic Park. Now, now they've got this Warhammer uh, game coming. And they're going to make more money off of that. And they just want to dump Elite Dangerous. That they're just doing the minimal amount of work which 
frankly, they've been known for for a long time with really dangerous. Just a minimal amount of work and expecting big rewards. It's sad to see a game with such a such a pedigree just languish and die the way it is. But that's what's happening. And I don't see any way out of it. Unless unless Frontier Development sells off the IP to some other company that can do it justice or they change their course, which is unlikely. I think their course is being set by Tencent, which owns a large stake in the company. 30%, which is currently the largest stakeholder. There's no future for Elite Dangerous. Star Citizen will likely release in 2025, 2030. I can't realistically see Elite Dangerous being around by that time. At some point, enough people will have left the game that Frontier will say, we can't justify keeping the servers running. We're gonna have to shut this down. Game's gonna die. It's gonna go away. It's sad, but it's true. Great game, great franchise, had superb VR experience, one of the best in VR, and it's going to die, but it shouldn't. It should have been treated better. David Braden should have kept to his original Kickstarter promise. Frontier should have not have deceived their fans, should not have deceived their community, but they did, and Elite is going to die. Such a waste. I'm in the Professor. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.